Okay, so let's get started. Thank you everyone for coming. My name is Bree Ray. I am the teacher for the MS News and News Chair Pilates segment that we do every, I believe it's third Monday. I think that was the pattern that was starting to, to, to come up. Um, so yeah, every Monday, every third Monday of every month, we get together, we move around on a chair. We may use or not use a prop, but today we're going to be using a pillow. So if you have one, go ahead and grab it. Um, if you have something squishy, like if you don't have a pillow, grab something squishy, something that will give you that feedback. And let us begin. All right. So first things first, and I, I know it might take you some time to get there, but I actually want you to sit onto the pillow to begin. So once you are there on your pillow, trying to get yourself into a position where your feet are still planted onto the ground. Now I know that pillows can, can sometimes like lift you up. So if you need to like scooch forward on your pillow, um, but we want to have this pillow here to give us a sense of, excuse me, a, a sense of instability. Okay. So you feel something that's underneath of you that isn't completely flat. All right. So once your feet are planted flat onto the ground, I want you to start to rock the pelvis or your hips back and forth. You can place your hands down onto your hips as you're curling your tailbone underneath of you, getting a little scoop, sort of like a shovel, and then trying to put your tailbone back behind you. Like you're trying to show off your tail feathers. And now I want you to do that on the exhale. So as you curl the tailbone underneath of you, exhale. And then as you show off your tail feathers, inhale. And repeat that another three times there. Go very slowly with your movements. Notice maybe a little bit more of the movements that allow your body to come and go because of the pillow. One more time to curl, to scoop, to, to shovel the pelvis forward, and then to show off the tail feathers back behind you. Okay. All right. Good. Now give your little tail feathers a wag to the right side. And then maybe to the left side. And if I say like rights and lefts, you start with whatever side um, looks like your right side to me. I know sometimes it can be a little confusing if I'm not, if I'm mirroring you and that's like, that doesn't look like her right side though. Um, I'll try to be better about cueing rights versus lefts. Just say one side versus the other, but you're kind of giving yourself a little bit of a, a cheek lift on one side, shortening one side of your body as you lengthen the opposite side of the body. Okay, so right now, shortening this side, lengthening that side. And do that two more times. Or maybe if you put your hands onto your hips, it's sort of like you're, you're Betty Booping or salsa dancing from side to side. Last one. All right, nice. Okay, then your left hand will come to your right knee. Your right hand will come to the back of your chair or underneath of your chair. And just choose a side, so the opposite hand to opposite knee. And lift your spine up tall and then look out over the back shoulder that's behind you. And take in three big deep breaths in and out. Deep breath in and out. One big inhale, final exhale. So that as you inhale again, lift your arms out to the side and then rotate around to the other side keeping your feet planted, not moving your legs, lifting your spine and looking back behind you. One more breath in and then breath out. Great. Now come back through center and place your hands onto your rib cage. So breathing, as you might've started to pick up, is very important in Pilates. So we breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the mouth. And your hands are here onto your ribs so that you can feel how the breath manipulates the ribs and then therefore your hands. Inhale in, exhale out. We'll do about three more there, five total. Breathe in through the nose. Try to breathe all the way down deep into the belly. And as you breathe out, like you're fogging up some ski goggles, force the breath out. Make it like basically obnoxious to where it's like, if somebody were in the other room, you're like, what are, what are they doing over there? What are you doing? Just tell them you're breathing. Practicing Pilates. Ah. 
Great. Now place your hands back onto your knees, arms stay long. So make sure you're not going down and bending your elbows, but instead your arms stay long and they slide down the front of your knees, giving yourself a slight little like candy cane shape of your spine as you curl chin to chest, heart over the thighs as you're reaching your hands down the shins and then lift yourself back up like you're trying to straighten out that candy cane shape. Inhaling to the top, exhaling back down into that deep, deep C curve. So basically, we're just emphasizing where we were at at the beginning of the class. So if this feels like too much, just remember where we were in that little baby tilt and curl. Okay, last one down. And then you'll come right back up. Now this time you'll take one or both of your hands back behind you. So if you can't reach for both hands, just do one hand and the other hand can rest onto your thigh. So we'll do two on each side or four total on this one. So as you inhale, I want you to lift your heart up, maybe your gaze up towards the ceiling and open that one side of your chest of the arm that's back behind you. Okay, exhale release and kind of stack the spine tall. As you inhale, open your chest, try to pull your heart forward as your gaze comes up and then exhale, release. Now we'll switch hands. So the one hand, other hand comes back behind you. The other hand comes out in front of you. And as you're inhaling to pull your heart forward, it's kind of like you're leaning forward away from the chair and then exhaling to come back, sit tall. Now one more time, inhale, and then exhale. Now just try, try to reach back with both hands. If you can't reach for the back of your chair, or maybe you don't have a back of the chair, reach underneath of your chair. And that might even be wide enough for you to grab. But then from that position, pull your heart forward, open the throat, lift the gaze. And then as you exhale, release. One more time, inhale. Open the chest, open the lungs, open the throat. Bring in more of that air, oxygen, and nutrients, and then exhale, relax, okay? So we're just intensifying the movements here. We're just leveling up. And that is what a lot of, at least the way that I teach Pilates can be, um, um, can be taught is just you layer into things sort of like onions of a layer. So now bring your, one of your hands down to your chair onto your thigh is also another option under your chair is another option for you to, to really grab underneath of you and your opposite arm reaches up and you take that big, deep side bend position. Now we're going to be switching from one side to the next. So then the hand that was reaching up overhead reaches underneath of you up and overhead. And if you can't reach under your chair, that's fine. Just place your hand onto your thigh, kind of lean into that and reach overhead. And maybe if you could only do one side, really imagine that you could do it on both sides. What is that? What would it feel like to be able to open that one side versus the other? Last time on each side, inhaling to lift exhaling to come over. Right. All right. Now your one hand, whichever hand you want to comes behind you onto the back of your chair again. And then your opposite hand comes to the opposite knee. So now this time we add a little bit of movement instead of holding your rotation. So as you inhale, lift up, twist deeper and exhale, hold for the breath, breath out. As you inhale, lift up, twist to the other side and exhale deeper. Inhale, twist to the other side. Exhale, rotate deeper. Inhale, lift up and go to the other side. One more each way. Think of how a barber shop, like when it's spinning, it spins upwards. Maybe it spins downward, but I want you to think of spinning upwards. <laughs> or a Twizzler. You're trying to lift your Twizzler and stretch it out even longer. Awesome. All right, good. Now from there, let's warm up our, um, our legs a little bit. So still sitting on that pillow, but I want you to scoot yourself forward towards the very edge of your chair. And like I said, at the beginning of the class, the pillow is just there to give us that sort of like unstable surface. So the goal is to make sure that your hips aren't sort of like tilting off to one side. Although we did just do that to warm up, but now I want you to keep everything strong, stable, and still. Whichever leg you want to start with, it reaches out in front of you. You got one leg that's bent, one leg that's straight. 
and start to point and flex that foot out in front of you. I don't know if you can see that from there, but I'm just pointing and flexing that foot. But now if your hands are on your hips, you might feel it happening. This is what we want to prevent from happening. Okay. So I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit. Can you see how my hips are moving? When I point my toes, that hip goes forward, the hip of the leg that's pointing. And then when I flex the foot, the hip comes back. Your goal is to not let that happen. No movement. And what you might start to notice or feel even with your hands, like if you can't feel it, like with your mind's eye, like go ahead and touch across the belly or even across the back. And you might feel some of that tonality of the muscles that help to hold your ribs, your hips all in line. Now bring that leg in and switch to the opposite leg. You can keep your hands there, or maybe take a challenge for yourself. And can you point and flex to that foot without that hip moving? I know it might feel like, okay, this is just an ankle warm up. This is just a foot warm up, but we're also still engaging through the core. This is like a full body warm up. Are you able to sit up tall with good posture? There's your upper body right there. Yeah, lifting your spine as if you had a puppet string coming out of the top of your head. All right, now go back to the first leg that you chose and stretch that back out in front of you. Point the toes. And now, really, again, focusing on the hips and keeping them still. Can you lift and lower that leg up and down off of the ground? Ooh, or maybe if your hands, if like that doesn't feel comfortable holding onto your hands, put your hands onto that pillow and see if that pillow is like kind of tilted to one side or the other as you lift and lower that leg. Now switch to the other side, see how that feels, see what you notice. Sometimes when we lift that leg, we can start to, to get a little bit more, um, like we can sort of crunch down, like, Ooh, look, my leg is going higher simply because maybe your perspective has changed and you've gotten lower. <laughs> okay. But stay lifted, stay tall, stay strong and lift with that powerhouse, your core. All right. Bring that leg back down, scooch back onto your chair. And now again, making sure you've got all of, all of the things still touching the ground, as well as your cheeks onto your pillow. And I want you to march one leg up put it down onto the ground. Oh, this is my hard side. Lift the opposite leg up. All right. So now when this, whichever leg is lifting, this is a time where your body wants to rotate. Okay. You do this when you're walking, you do this when you're running, but we're trying to keep everything stable and still. This is basically your anti-rotational energy that we're working on. So when one leg lifts, can you resist the urge to twist towards it? We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll make it more functional. But first I want you to notice the patterns and try to stay still. Okay. You can hold on to the bottom of your chair. If you're like, Oh, but things are moving. I don't know about this. If it feels too hard, just take the pillow out of the way. And you'll be like, Oh wow, that's a big difference. Another thing that I want you to notice, if when you lift your leg, does that knee kind of come out to the side or does the foot kind of come in a little bit? Just something to notice. Okay. Try to go up and down. Okay. What I'm noticing for my body, at least today is my left side is always my challenge side. That's always my, my side. I really have to focus on, but my left side really just wants to go off to the side. But if I can focus on it, let's just do one more each side then I can really like pull that left leg up, prevent that body from twisting towards it, okay? And then lower it back down. Awesome. Now step your feet out wide, take as big of a stretch as you can with your hands onto the insides or your fingers on the insides of your thighs, lean forward like you're going in for a good story. And then rotate your body gently from side to side, just like we did before with our rotations, but now kind of leaning forward and this is where, you know, a lot of, um, exercises and Pilates or a lot of exercises can differ from Pilates or Pilates can differ from exercises is because we focus a lot on the spinal movements. Most people think of Pilates as like a core exercise or a core workout, which it is because without a strong core, you will not have a healthy spine. Go ahead and bring yourself back up. 
if you have, or if you know anyone who has had back trouble and has gone to PT or has seen a doctor, they almost, depending on their situation, almost always will recommend some sort of exercise intervention. And most of the time it is always Pilates. Um, so just putting that out there, strong core helps to keep that spine healthy. All right. So now place your hands across the chest and I'll give you guys options as we progress into this. So this is going to be your easiest option here to hinge your body back. So think of like Dracula going down for the, for the morning, had to think about that. And then he's coming up for the night. Inhale to pull your body back. So as if you were going straight back and then straight up, okay, you've got like a surfboard behind you. That's being lowered down towards the, towards the ground or into the water. Okay. Just do one more with the hands in front of the chest. We'll kind of explore what the difference is. If you want to make it harder this time, bring your hands behind your head. Now we want to make sure that those ribs don't flare out in front of you. So pull the ribs down. Your hands are behind your head for your head to pull back against as you go back and forward for four. Inhale back, exhale forward for three. Now, if you did take the option behind the head, you'll notice, oh, wow, I can't go back as far unless you're, you know, holding yourself accountable and making sure you still got that form and alignment. Last one. All right. Now, Everyone try this with your arms out in front of you. And you'll notice that it's like you have a counterweight in front of you. So from the side view, you pull yourself back into that hinge spine and then bring yourself forward. Now, because the arms are out in front of you, like I said, it's like a counterweight. So maybe now you can actually go back and touch the back of your chair if you haven't been doing that before. It does take a little bit of that shoulder strength to be able to hold those arms out in front of you, but you wouldn't be able to, if you didn't try last one. All right. Hands down onto your knees, cat and cow through the spine. Okay. So if you feel like, oh man, I can't do that. Like why, why am I here? There's always going to be options. And there's like the more classes that you come to you guys, the more options you'll start to be aware of that work for your body. All right. So hands behind your head or across your shoulders or behind your head. So take those, one of those options. And then the last one, we'll all finish with our arms out in front of you. So one or two. Okay. And then we lift up one leg and I want you to twist towards it and then lower that leg down and then lift up the opposite leg. Make sure it's coming up straight up, not rotating off to the side. And then you lower that leg down exhale to twist like you're wringing out a wet towel inhale back down exhale rotate twist and lower it back down okay we're going to do two more each side so if you do want to see like mm, what is it what, what what would happen if you tried hands behind your head two more each side think of still lifting your spine up tall lifting that leg up each time it lifts higher and higher, closing the gap between elbow and knee. They will not touch, but you want to really minimize that gap. All right. Now arms out in front of you and rotate your body first towards the right or left, whichever side, and then lift that leg up four times, three, two, and one. And now rotate towards the other side and lift the opposite leg up for three or four, sorry, three numbers are hard. Two, and one. Great. Then from there, hands onto your knees. Just kind of lean forward and pull the heart forward. Look, gaze up. Round the spine, tailbone heavy. Do as many as you'd like of these cat and cow spines. Open the chest. Round it back. And one more time. All right. All right. So enough sitting on the pillow now. So you're going to take that pillow out from underneath of you and whoo, that chair feels really hard now. Okay. So now like having that unstable surface, just taken out from underneath of you is like, wow. Okay. Now I really feel what it feels like to be stable. You're going to place that pillow on the ground under your right foot. Okay. So now your right foot has, or left foot, whichever foot you want to start with one of your feet, sorry, <laughs> has a pillow underneath of it. The other foot does not. Okay. All right. So this is ankle toe foot strength. And I want you to feel as if you are kind of like, like a cat making biscuits 
on that pillow. So you're kind of just like kneading the pillow, making some dough here. Okay, so think about the heel going down first, then the toes are the last thing to really put that pressure into the pillow. So you're rolling or waving that foot around. Now go in the opposite direction, toe, ball of the foot, heel, and then go down toe, ball of the foot, heel. Maybe you can think of it like a dolphin going through the waves. Okay, now can you do that without letting your body kind of like ugh, move forward and back with your foot? or side to side with that foot, stay upright, stay tall, stay lifted. And then whew, there we go. Core is turned on. It's a lot to think about. So being and holding yourself accountable here in these movements. All right, good. Now lean back against the back of your chair, but keeping your spine long. So if you feel um, like, oh, that's not far enough, just scoot your butt forward. And then putting all of your pressure down into your right foot, hands pressing down into your chair or pulling onto your chair, whichever feels easiest. Now the leg that is not on the pillow is going to be lifting up as you push, push, push onto the pillow. Now lower that leg down and continue to lift and lower. We're here for eight, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Notice how much pressure you have to put into that pillow in order to for the other leg to feel like it's floating. Last three, two, and one. Straighten that opposite leg out and away and continue with long leg lifts for eight, seven. Got to really focus on my hips here because this is my left side really trying to move the pelvis. If my core is not turned on, it will. For three, two, and one. Whew. You can sit up straight or sit up right and move that pillow over towards the other side. All right, so with yourself sitting up right, you can think of like your two hip points and then your two most like prominent rib points as being like a box. So we want to make sure that your box stays a box. It doesn't like turn into some weird like rhomboid or trapezoid shape. Um, instead, you've got this, the equalness from both sides. So as you roll through heel, ball, toe, pick it up, roll, heel, ball, toe, pick it up and roll. Making those biscuits, kneading some dough. Maybe this is a wine bucket. I don't know. What's your preference? And so hopefully what it feels like, or maybe at least it looks like if you had a mirror in front of you is that the leg is moving independently of your body instead of just like this. Mm. Mm. Now go ahead and switch directions. Toe, ball, heel. Oh, I can feel myself doing it. Oh, this, this direction is always the harder one. I think it's just because we're switching directions and my body's so used to going the original direction. It's like, why, why did we stop? What's going on? Ooh. Yeah, if you really wanna challenge yourself, lift your whole foot completely off the pillow and then dive it back down. Toes first, heel last. Whew, okay. Jam that foot into the pillow, lean your body back. You might have to shimmy your booty forward if you moved anything. And then it's your opposite leg, the one not on the pillow, that's going to be lifting and lowering, keeping everything in that square box. And to add more challenge, barely touch the ground. Like right now my toes are just the only thing touching the ground when that, when that leg lowers. Two and one. Now straighten that leg out. You're a can-can dancer now. You're one of the rockets. Make sure that first those hips are in alignment with each other, with the ribs, with the hips, and lift and lower. Inhale to lower, exhale to lift. Inhale to lower, exhale to lift. Five more. Push back into your chair, push down into the pillow, pull up from the core. Last two and one. Woo. Okay, let's bring it up. And now just slide that pillow in between your heels, your ankles, more, more so your ankles, because we want your heels, the bottom part of your foot onto the ground. 
All right, now, once it's there, really like squeeze, 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 walk your feet in, walk your knees in, but don't touch your knees because then your feet are still apart from each other. So you don't wanna be knock kneed here. You wanna be as close as your feet are together and then your knees are, okay? So there's a really big feedback that you're getting from the pillow and you might be feeling this hopefully in your inner thighs. All right, now from there, can you lift your heels? And this might be hard to see in my video, but then lowering them back down. So if you can see my hands, my hands are lifting the heel of my palms and lowering back down. And that's what's happening at the foot level. Exhale to lift and inhale to lower. Making sure that your body itself does not go back or forward with the movement. It stays upright because of our core. Strong core means open posture. Open, strong, lifted posture means better air, more, more nutrients, more minerals to the body, more efficiency with the body. Ooh, and a thighs on fire. We got three, two, and one. Now we're going to lower those heels down, but turn just your right foot out. And I realize this might be a little hard to see. You can't see my foot, but you can see that knee sort of turning out. Okay. So I'm really going to pull that, that this is my right side, my right heel in towards my left, but the knee stays out to the side. Now, both heels will lift off of the ground. So my left foot is forward. My right foot is turned out, but now just my right lowers down and back up. So the leg that has turned out for you, that is the only thing that lifts and lowers. And what this does is it helps to strengthen inner thigh as well as outer leg. Okay. Because of that turned out position, because of that lift and lower, because of the squeeze of that pillow. Four, three, two, hold the heel lifted. Last one. Now just turn the toes forward, your knee forward, and then turn your left or the opposite leg out and go for that same set of movements there. The heel lifts and lowers five more. Oh, this side's harder. Four, three. Make sure the other leg doesn't stop working on you. Last two. Oh my. And then last one. Lower both feet down. You can release that pillow for a moment and take that big wide thigh stretch again with your fingertips on the inside of your thighs. Lean forward like you're going in for a good story. Give yourself a gentle twist and push on the leg that you're twisting away from so you can feel that deeper inner thigh stretch. Inhale, lift up, look center, and exhale, twist and push the opposite leg that you're rotating away from. Repeat, lift, and switch. Pull up and rotate. One more time, each side. All right, now we're gonna lower down and pick up that pillow between your hands, but notice how my feet are still wide. So we're just gonna do a little transition here and make that a movement, okay? So make sure you have a good amount of chair underneath of you so you don't feel like you're gonna fall forward or off of the chair. And remember you guys, listen to your bodies first and foremost, you don't have to listen to me as your first and, and only option. So you're holding that chair into your hands. Your arms are long. Feet are planted super heavy. So as you lower down, I want you to think of pushing into your feet super, super, super strong to resist yourself lowering down. And then push into your feet to lift back up. Okay. So it's like you're going to gently place an, an egg down underneath or, the, or there's an egg under the pillow. And you're going to put the pillow on top of the egg. But you got to do it very softly, very gently. Your chickens only just started laying eggs. So some of them sometimes break very easily. Ooh. So this is equivalent to like basically you doing a deadlift. Okay. This movement right here, if you didn't have a chair, you could still do it in this position. You're going down and back up. Okay. But since we're seated, we can do this same movement and Still feel it in the glutes and the legs working for us. Do that one more time, down and up, and stay up and lifted, but now close the legs on that pillow. And if your pillow is like mine, you have a square pillow, then it doesn't matter which side you kind of squeeze it in on. But if you needed a little bit more feedback or a little bit more zhush from your pillow, take the longer side, like squeeze the rectangular side, or maybe not as much. 
the, the more square side of your pillow. All right, but you wanna have some pretty good tension here. And again, say hello to your inner thighs, lift and lower those heels again, eight times and keep your body from moving back and forth with it. Stay strong and long, five. It's like your hips, your heart and your head are all in line with each other. Last two and one. Lower your heels down, reach your arms out in front of you. And now as your heels lift, can you lean back? As your heels lower, can you bring yourself forward? <sighs> Inhale to lean back, to lift the heels. Exhale to lower the heels, to bring yourself back upright. Two more here, just four total of these to start. Always with the layers, the onions. All right, now, if that has been feeling good, can we progress and stay back there and start to lift one arm next to your ear and lower it back down. Lift the opposite arm up and lower it back down. Heels are still lifted, body is still in that hinged position. I'm gonna show you the profile real quick. We got three more each side. Can you lift your heart a little bit more? Two more each side. Last one. And one, then you come all the way back up, stack the spine tall. If you need to give yourself a little cat and cow to the spine, please do so. But then from here, we're going to lift your, uh, one of your feet, okay? One of your heels, one of your heels. So I'm gonna go with this leg first. So this heel is lifted and that's gonna be the side that I'm rotating towards, okay? So with your arms out in front of you, let's stay upright at first. So now that same arm is going to pull back like I'm playing a harp or pulling back a bow and arrow. And then reach forward, lower that heel down. Lift the opposite heel, rotate towards the opposite side. Inhale forward. Continue with that same pattern, that same focus and control, that same amount of like, okay, one side, the other side, other side, the other side. Now, if these have been feeling good and you want to level up or have another option for you, as the heel lifts, as your arm pulls back, can you lean your body back? and then bring it back forward, lower the heel down, lift the heel, pull that arrow back and you lean back with it. Three more each side. All while still keeping a pretty firm squeeze on that pillow, there's somebody else. It's your mean older brother or sister. They're trying to take it from you. One more each side. And then finishing strong, you bring yourself back up. Maybe take that pillow out from between the legs and just let it rest onto your thighs there. Give yourself a couple of shoulder shrugs in one direction and the next. Maybe give yourself a little shimmy from side to side. All right, now, sort of like a bulldog, turn your fingertips in towards each other, and your elbows wide, okay? And you wanna place them right above where your thighs would be on the pillow. Don't be pushing into the middle of the pillow to where you lose the pillow completely but just onto where the thighs are under the pillow. All right, then from there, you lower yourself down as your elbows get wider, then you push yourself back up, arms straight. You might be kind of hinging back when that happens. That's okay, I've been practicing. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, going down, exhale to push away. Try that five more times, keeping your body in that straight line from head to tail as if there was a steel rod there. We got about two more. And then last one. Now this is where it can start to get challenging. So if it feels too challenging, just come back to the double arm option but take one hand across to the opposite side. So if this is my right hand, it's going across to my left thigh. Your other hand can grab under the chair or behind the chair to help and support you. But now as you go down, there's a little bit of rotation added and then you push yourself away for that single arm push up. We're doing four each side. Inhale to go down and rotate and then exhale to push away. Two more. Try to make sure it's just the hand on the pillow doing the work. 
Otherwise, the other hand behind you starts to assist. The other hand behind you is just sort of like a kickstand. It's just holding you up, but just a little bit. Take the opposite hand to the opposite thigh, other hand reaching back or underneath of you or not on anything at all. And then you lower down, twisting towards the right and then lifting back up, untwisting yourself. Kind of getting that upper body warmed up for us here for two more. And one more. All right, now take that pillow into your hands and with your elbows wide, make sure that your shoulders aren't up by their ears though. So lower those shoulders down. If holding the elbows high, just automatically lift your shoulders, keep your elbows low, okay? And then it's like you're trying to clap your hands. So you're pushing your hands towards one another, squeeze that pillow and then open back up. Eight here for seven. Six. Who knew you'd be playing an accordion in a Pilates class? Five. Four. If you don't have a pillow, just continue like pushing your hands into one another, releasing them and pushing. Two. Then hold that squeeze. It's the tiniest pillow you've ever seen. Then push away and pull back in. Push and pull. So we're still staying upright. Just drawing that away and in. If reaching higher is, is too challenging, open your legs a little bit and you can go right down between them and then pull it back in. Four more. Three. Getting ready to hold that pillow out in two. So the further your arms are away, the harder it is. The closer in towards your body, the easier it is. We rotate that pillow from one side to the next. Lifting your spine up tall. Inhale through center, exhale twist. Can you keep that pillow as tiny as possible? Can you keep your shoulders as soft as possible? I'm gonna make sure that just like a barbershop pole, you're not leaning to one side or the other, you're staying upright for one more. Each side, Whew. place that pillow down. Maybe give your arms a little rest on this, on this pillow here. You can roll out your wrists a couple times. You can even give them a nice little stretch by pulling down onto the backs of your hands. Oh. or pulling up onto your fingertips, sort of whichever sort of stretch feels comfortable for your wrist. Sometimes it won't feel good for other people in this, in this movement. Sometimes the opposite won't feel good. All right, but now pick that up. We're not done with those arms yet. You're going to hold it in front of your chest. You don't have to worry about how hard you're squeezing. Really, it's just the, the weight of this pillow is what you're going to be pressing up overhead. Exhale as you press up overhead and then inhale as you bring it back down. If it feels too heavy, place the pillow onto your lap or off to the side. And then if you're like, well, this is, this is a pillow. Like how, how is this not easy? I want you to squeeze it at the top. So arms up overhead and then give it a squeeze and then unsqueeze it and then pull it back down. But you have to do that without letting your shoulders come up by the ears for four. Three. two, Ooh, and then last one, we'll give our arms a little break before we finish with some side bending. So sometimes the side bending, especially if the arms are up overhead can be very uh, challenging, but also a little intimidating because you don't have anything underneath of you to kind of hold you. So if this movement where we come up overhead and we lean from side to side feels or looks like no way Jose, then just place the pillow down and we'll come back to the one arm underneath of you, the one arm above you. Okay. So we got four total or just two each side. Okay. If you're going to go one arm up overhead, just count for yourself, hold yourself accountable. Go ahead and bring the pillow up overhead, soften the shoulders away from the ears. If you were wearing long dangly earrings, your shoulders would not be touching those earrings. You come over to one side. Ooh. And then over to the other side. Isn't that interesting? Like how you thought like, oh, maybe I could go further, but nope. Anytime we lift the arms up, and especially if we're holding something, even if it's something light like a pillow, can sometimes just completely change what you thought you had planned for yourself. Everyone lower down that pillow. Give yourself a couple of another round of shoulder shrugs, maybe some neck rolls if that feels good for your body. Some wrist rolls. Just being careful not to move too fast or to uh, quickly when it comes to those neck rolls. 
Amazing. All right, now that pillow is gonna go behind us. You're hiding it away here. So it's now gonna be resting up against your chair like so. And then scoot your butt all the way back up against it and your back up against it, but still making sure that you have your feet planted onto the ground. So if that is unacceptable, then I want you to scoot your butt forward and sort of lean back against that like imaginary surfboard that I talked about at the beginning of the class. Okay. So you're either upright straight spine or kind of scooched out in front of you straight spine, either way, straight spine. All right. Hands underneath of you straighten that spine even more by engaging through the core. So ribs and hips are in one square alignment. Now one arm is going to reach out in front of you and lower back down. The opposite arm reaches out in front of you, lower back down, sort of like a, um, a soldier marching along, let the opposite arm that comes in front, the opposite arm pulls back behind you. Okay. So you're sort of swaying or swishing your arms past one another. So maybe can you notice a little bit of a stretch on that arm that's swinging back behind you and swinging isn't the right word because that would be like, oh, you're out of control. You're swinging the arms around, but pulling the arm back, you're actively reaching forward and backwards. Now listen carefully, whichever arm you have up. So I'm saying hi with my right arm, the opposite leg lifts up. Ooh, and then as that leg lowers down, your arms start to swish past each other, pulling past each other as the opposite leg lifts. Now this takes a lot of that concentration again. We still have the stable surface underneath of us, but now we have an unstable surface behind us. Ooh, that changes up the game. A whole other way to play the game. Let's do one more each side. And finish strong there. Very good. Now, if you are up against the, the pillow nice and tall, I do want you to join those of us who are kind of scooched forward with your butt out in front of you. Okay. So now everyone is kind of leaning back against this imaginary or maybe fluffy um, recliner chair that we've just made for ourselves. Now, put one fist and then one palm together in front of your heart. Okay. So you're like, like this is like the bully at, at recess. Okay. From there, push them hard into one another. So notice how you can feel the arms, the chest, everything, not everything, but most of the upper body working for you here. Now rotate your body from right to left. And it's going to be a small rotation at first. Then it might stay here. Okay. But everyone's body is different. But now in the direction that you rotate towards, can you lift that leg up towards the rotation? And then lift the opposite leg up as you rotate in that direction. Exhale to twist. Inhale to lower. Keep pushing back against that pillow while maintaining that straight spine. Keep pushing your hands, your fists together. One more each side. And finish strong there. This time, just take your hands down onto the chair underneath of you or behind you and try to pull your heart or your back away from the chair. So lifting yourself away from, sorry, I said chair, I meant pillow, away from the pillow. And then letting yourself rest back down into that pillow. All right. Now, whichever leg you want, stretch that leg out in front of you. Make sure again that your hips are level with each other. Sometimes when we stretch that leg out, that hip likes to kind of dip down. It's called either an up slip if it goes up or down slip if it goes down. So pull those hips back into alignment with each other. And then from there, push your hands into the chair. Lift and lower that leg. Making sure you're not just collapsing onto the pillow that's behind you, but that you're lifting your spine nice and tall. Now, when that leg lifts, here's number four. Can you open it and close it, then lower it back down? Try four of those. Lift, open, close, and lower. Still watching those hips, making sure, oh boy, nothing's moving. So that's number four. Now, can you make a whole square? So you go out, lower down, slide it back in front of you, and lift up. Open out, lower down, slide it back. Two more, out, down, and in. Last one in this direction. 
Ooh. Okay. Slide out, up, in, and down. And so your squares might be little, 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 little smaller or a little bigger. And that all depends on, hmm, how's your core helping to keep those hips and ribs in line with each other? Here's our last one in this direction. Lower, slide that foot in and reach the other foot out. Okay. If you need to give yourself a moment to breathe or to break or come out of this, please listen to your body first and foremost. Hands are down and start to lift and lower that other leg up and down for four. Three, two, and hold it lifted now. Pull it out and in. Oh, sorry, we went down as well. Up, out, in, and down. Two more. Up, out, in down last one. And then we finish with our either leg circles or leg squares, whatever you shape you're kind of making with yourself, but make sure that there are at least four corners or very obvious lifts and circles around last one in this direction. You go out to the side, up, around, and in. Ooh, got to make sure I watch what the right leg is doing. Cause that guy likes to do his own little thing here as well. Two, and one well done bring both legs back in sit yourself up tall this time we're going to take that pillow and slide it up until it is no longer touching like the lower part of your back but now it's up against the middle to upper part of your back all right then you got to scoot yourself back to where you can still maintain contact with that pillow hands onto your lap and your elbows will start bent at first. So your hands are closer towards your hips, nod the chin down towards the chest and start to push your hands away from you. Can you push backwards into your pillow? As your arms grow longer and longer, notice how you kind of get a little bit more of a curve in your spine. Maybe your hands have started to move past your knees or down the shins, but you're still maintaining contact with that pillow. Don't let it drop. Then stack the spine up tall. Can you lift taller than where you were seated before? Repeat that for three more. Inhale back up. And you try to do these movements with one full breath out. When you feel like you don't have any more breath, that's your green light to come back up and breathe in. Exhaling last time down. One more time back up. Amazing. Nice job, you guys. All right. So now from there, we're going to reach our right arm out to the side. Okay. And then it's sort of like a typewriter sort of movement. I want you to typewriter your body towards that arm that's lifted and then pull it back or your body back towards center. So your pillow will kind of slide and glide with you, but maybe notice or even bring your opposite hand to that side that we're moving away from. And I want you to feel how much those muscles are working for you here to pull you back upright. If reaching the arms out to the side doesn't feel comfortable for you, you can just keep them down by your side, but that little bit of movement to the right and then back up center is you bringing alignment back up into your spine. Ooh, my pillow isn't really moving with me. Last one and switch to the other side. So if you can, the opposite arm reaches out to the side and that just gives you what it just gives you an extra reach, but it also gives you a little bit extra weight. Okay. So if you ever noticed like, okay, well, when I lifted my leg, when the knee was bent versus when it was straight, straight leg felt harder. That's just what we're doing here with the arm. When the arm is down by your side versus out to the side, you have less weight to move out and in. You have more weight to move out and in when that arm is lifted. So you're just, it's, it's physics. <sighs> Last two. And one more. Beautiful. All right. Readjust your pillow. If you're like me and that pillow wasn't really moving, but I guess it was kind of a little bit. Scoot your butt forward. Okay. So now you're back into that 
hinged back position. Mm -hmm. We get ready for a little bit of rotation through the upper body, but a lot of lift through the lower body. So you can start with hands across the chest. Okay. I'll give you a third option here, hands in front of heart center. So you can do that fist to palm or palm to palm, like a prayer or third option, hands behind the head. Okay. So now as you lift up one leg, before you even do feel the core start to engage. Okay. Turn that on first and then rotate towards that leg. And you start to curl away from the pillow just a little bit more, but you're still pushing back into the pillow. I know that sounded like a weird oxymoronic cue, but your shoulder that's staying onto the pillow is pushing back into the pillow. The shoulder pulling away from the pillow is getting closer and closer towards the knee. Very slow controlled movements. Focus and concentrate on the precision of the movements. Two more each side. One more each side. If your hands are behind your head, make sure your head is pulling back into your hands to keep the neck, the chest open. Last and final one. Ooh-wee. Lift yourself up. Go ahead and take that pillow out in front of you. You can rest your forearms onto the pillow there. Just give yourself a little like rounded position. Or if you wanted to, just kind of like cat and cow through the spine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to stand the pillow up on top of your thighs. Remember if you have a square pillow, it doesn't matter which side, but if you want that rectangular pillow, you're going to hold it longer. Okay. You want a little less, you hold it more narrower. Okay. Both hands are on top of the pillow. And now this is your accordion again. So you're pushing down on the accordion as your arms go long. I'll show you the profile, bend the elbows to pull the pillow back up, straighten the arms. And you're kind of like, yeah, smushing the pillow away from you and then pulling that pillow back up towards you. <laughs> when I pull the pillow back, I kind of feel like a little meerkat, like a Timon and Pumbaa sort of meerkat. Like my hands are like, Mer. or maybe you could think of like, you're looking over a, a, a fence line. You're like, what's over there? Okay. But that bent elbow position is your inhale, straightening the arms and pushing down, 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 down is the exhale without having to move your spine. So notice I'm not like, uh, try that three more times. Lift your spine taller as you push down into that pillow. Two more. And uno mas. All right. Nice job, you guys. All right. We're starting to get closer to winding up our class here. So you're going to put the pillow. Um, if you have a rectangular pillow short side onto your waistline and the other short side is underneath of your arm, you want to get it as close and up and in towards your armpit as you can. And just let that arm kind of dangle your feet are planted flat here. And with this hand, that's just dangling down by your side. You might want to scooch off away from it so that you have some room to put your hand onto the chair. Okay. So this extra little, like cushion onto right now, this is the right side of my body. That extra little cushion helps to open up the left side of my body. So as that left arm reaches up and overhead, creating more space into that le left rib cage, lower down with the arm, lift tall with the spine and repeat. Exhale, push into the right arm that's going down into the chair and try not to just hide your face away and just let the left arm hang, but actively reaching up overhead. Two more. And last one. All right. Switch it over. Maybe scoot yourself over to the other side. Get that pillow up and in as close to the armpit on that side as you can. Letting that, and this is my left arm dangle. As the right arm comes up overhead, the left arm meets in contact with the seat of my chair. And then you inhale back up. Exhale, push into the chair to squeeze the pillow against your side a little bit more and inhale back up. Exhale, two more. Nice job, everyone. Final one.
Beautiful. All right, go ahead and put that pillow off to the side. You did it. Your, whichever leg you want to start with brings itself up onto the opposite thigh. If you're unable to get there, kind of just let that leg hang off to the side. So your the outside of your foot is down onto the ground and your knee is opening off to the side. But basically the higher that foot is. So if you had a piece of furniture, like a coffee table in front of you, that's not as high as your knee. You can let your foot rest there. Pull the toes up towards your knee. Okay. Sit the body, sp the body spine, sit the spine and the body tall and hinge forward. Almost like your heart is being pulled forward by a string. Okay. Lean into that good story that's being told right now. I know it's not mine, but just imagine you're in a campfire. Mm, it's a warm summer night. You guys are telling spooky stories. All right. And then from there, that same leg, whichever leg you're using is going to step out wide to the side. If the corner of your chair is kind of in your way, turn yourself, like turn yourself towards the opposite corner. So it's kind of between your legs and that leg is off to the side. Okay. Now your same arm is going to go down the leg as the opposite arm reaches off to the side. And then you're going to bring the opposite arm down to its same leg. See, this is where it's hard for me. I got to I, I feel like I have to say left and right. <laughs> As the opposite opposite arm reaches up and overhead. <laughs> oh, so here it is from the front. One arm goes up overhead as one arm goes down the same sided leg. As the one arm rests onto the thigh, the opposite arm reaches up overhead. Mhm. Mm Awesome. Now bring that front or long leg out in front of you and then pulling your toes up towards the nose. Your hands can rest onto your thigh, lean your body forward and really keep that leg actively pulling toes towards the nose and almost like you're trying to push your heel away from you and breathe there for two more breaths in and out one more in and out to relax and then lift yourself up nice and tall left foot onto the ground or sorry your other foot onto the ground your other ankle onto that thigh pulling the toes up towards the nose or towards the knee goodness gracious i don't know the, the parts of my body today remember if this is too high you have the ground you have a coffee table a piece of furniture to rest your leg onto and kind of like jam that elbow into the knee pull those toes up towards the knee Okay, and lean in for that good story. Whew. Feeling this on the outside of the hips through all of that movement that we did, like sweeping that leg out to the side. Any of that rotation as well. Go ahead and open that leg out to the side. So take a big step out. That arm slides down the long leg. You reach up overhead. Opposite arm rests down onto the thigh as the long arm leg, long side leg arm. Goodness gracious. You guys can see. You can see what's happening. Obviously, I can't say what's happening, but you can see it. <laughs> One more each way. And from there, the long leg that's off towards the side will now come in front of you for both of your hands to come onto the knee that's bent, pull the long leg toes up towards you and then hinge your body forward, push your heel away from you, dig it into the ground even. Two more big inhales and exhales. Last in and out. Go ahead and stack the spine up tall. Take your legs out wide one last time. And if you've noticed if like leaning forward gives your body any discomfort, just stay up tall and take these rotations here, three each side. Or just don't go as far into that hinge forward. Amazing job today, guys.
All right. So that was your little snippet of Movement Mondays, MS Views and News Pilates Chair Class. Again, my name is Brie Ray. So if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to reach out. And I will see you guys next month. Awesome. Thanks so, so much for coming, you guys. Until the next time.